，是吗？嗯，你的话是这么长。能看到吗？能看吗？看吗？看到，你是不是关掉了？现在呢？现在看不到。啊，开始了，开始了。这开始了，两已经开始了，两秒。但是已经一零七八毫秒了。可以了，可以了。哎、啊，越老越。对，我们可以开始。OK。OK， 四大机电已经开始了，我给你看一下。嗯 ，OK， 那我们直接就开始吧。那怎么当？好牛的。都是我们自己是吗？是的，那就开始。这个是我们看到阿紫的笑容。开始了，你们就两个。嗯。So hello everyone, welcome to our live show. Today is the release day of our K8 GNS OEM modules. And our live show will start at 8 p.m. So please come in our live show quickly. And this is Chloe. I'm a new member of ComNav. And I just graduated from college and worked here for two months. So I really appreciate this chance to let me take part in this live show. And this is Arthur. Hello, everyone. This is Arthur from ComNav Technology. I think some of you should know me, and uh, some others may not. So let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm working in Kamnav Technology for more than three years. We are taking part in our sales team for around one and a half years. I'm taking charge of the OEM board sales, and also some uh, special industrial applications. Uh, actually, before I went into sales, I've worked in our department for the OEM board technique support for another around one and a half years. So this time, it's really interesting for me to introduce our new released OEM modules to you. Yeah. So um, <coughs> there's still five minutes left. And uh, before the show, let's talk about something about our K8. Yeah. So you know, last month, China has launched the final satellites of Beidou. Yes, yes. So that means the Beidou global system has been established successfully. So I want to know, will this have any positive impact on our um, K8 modules? Yes. Uh, so, so Chloe, uh, first I want to ask you, do you know uh, which factor or how many factors will influence the GNSS RDK performance? That's a big question. <laughs> there are many factors, but yeah. I think the main factor should be the uh, signal tracking, uh, satellite numbers, or the RTK algorithm. Yes, yeah. yes. So actually, I think the the biggest advantage of the bit global signal yeah. should be the satellite number. Uh, in the past, we usually you know improve ourselves the signal tracking. Yes. Improve the RTK algorithm, but it will still limit it to the satellite number or the constellations. Yes. Now, wherever you are, you can get you can check more than ten satellites than before. It will be a very big improvement. Yes. Yeah. So it improves the stability, yes. reliability, and the accuracy. Yes. Yes. That's a big pro improvement. And uh, besides this improvement, I want to know, is there any main difference between the K7 series and our new K8 series? Uh, the, the difference should be, or the improvement should be yeah. the performance and yes. the size and the power consumption. In the past, uh, how to say, the K7 series is very hard to use in some uh, consumption, uh, consumption uh, market. Yeah. But now K8 can do it because of the small size, you can use it in almost all the high accuracy applications. Oh, yes. yes. Okay. And we also use our the latest generation yeah. uh, technology. That's how we can show it. We can see it. Yeah. Okay. So it's uh, easier to integrate. Yeah. 
so it can be used in more applications. Yes, so talk yes. about the applications. Is there any new areas for the K8 modules? I think the biggest market should be the IoT, the Internet uh, of the, the Things. Internet, yeah. Internet of Things. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, still that reason. In the past, maybe because of the size or the price, some reasons, it's very hard to use the OEM board to such a rear. But mm -hmm. but now you can use it. Uh, it will be how to say yeah. it will cost le much 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 less than before. Yeah. yeah. The cost. The cost. Yes. So because the power consumption. Yes. The size. Yes, and the price. And now reasons. we have the SMD, the surface mounted design. Yes, 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 yes. And more details will be introduced in our next part. So <laughs> Then yeah, I want to show it. Yes. Yeah. I also want to show all of you our <laughs> new product. Yeah. I will show it this later. Is, yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's almost 8 p.m. and our live show will start soon. So let us to have a uh, okay. prepare okay. for his introduction. So um, today is our release day of our K at GNSS modules. And very welcome to our live show. And today's live show will have three parts. The first part is me to introduce you our product promotion activities. And then the second part, Arthur will give you an introduction about our K8 series modules. And then we will have a Q&A part. So during the whole live show, if you have any questions, please leave your comments. And we will record all of your questions and it will be answered at the end of our live show. So the first part, the promotion activities. First, we will have a try me price for the top 100 customers. So if you are interested in our K8 modules, please don't miss the chance. Then we will carry out an education program. It's called Star Education Fund. The program is also aimed to popularize the GNSS industry and the Beidou navigation system. So it's not only for our product promotions. So if you have done any GNSS researches, you can apply for our education program banners. And more details will be announced in our Facebook after this live show. So please follow our Facebook to get further information. And these are our promotion activities. Next, let's please ask her to come back to give his introduction. Okay. 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 Back again. Uh, I'm very glad to see all of you come here to see K8 series releasing broadcast. Uh, this time we released our K8 series GNSS OEM modules, including K803 and K823. I think the excellent hardware and software performance will give you the best experience in your project. We can see that they will be the prominent products in the current international GNSS OEM market. So firstly, let's see a video.
Okay. So K8 series, it's not just the smaller. Since we released our first types OM board at 2012, there are already three generations with around, I think, 10 types boards in the international market. From the K5 series with a big size but just support two constellations and dual frequencies, to the K7 series, we can do the same size and even smaller size but with the better performance, such as the four constellations, triple frequencies, or such as the dual antenna calculation. We truly do it better, but it was still limited in the industrial area or the professional area. Oh, sorry. But K8 series is different compared to the normal pin type boards like K7. K8 series are surface mounted components. We design them with a smaller size, easier integration method, but we never compromise to the GNSS performance. I aim to show you more details about our K8 series. Today we will talk, we will talk it through two parts. One is about the specifications, and another is about the real environment testing analysis. So, from the first day that we developed our own board, we never stopped involving and innovating our GNS technology these years. We can see eight series are totally different than before, with many differences. Uh, later, we will describe the specifications from four parts. The first is about the core technology, our self-developed SOC chip. The second is about the smaller size and the low power consumption. The third is about the onboard IMU chip. And the fourth is about the flexible communications. So firstly, let me introduce our latest Quantum 3 SOC to you. Uh, this Quantum Actually, it's not that quantum. We usually said uh, quantum mechanics. Actually, this is named from our CTO, Dr. Wang's full name. He is the soul of our research and development team, where he researches GNS technology, RTK algorithm for more than 20 years. That's our company's absolute core technology. So we named it as quantum. Uh, we already started to research our GNS baseband chip since company founded. From the Quantum 1 to Quantum 2 to current Quantum 3 SOC chipset, we use it in our own boards. We are committed to develop our self-developed GNS hardware and software technologies. Nowadays, we can see Quantum 3 is already in the top level in the GNS field. So, we go back to the chip side. Let me officially introduce the left one is the Quantum 3 SOC chip. It combines baseband and uh, CPU together, supporting 4UART and uh, several SPI and uh, I2C bus. We use, it, we use it in our K8 series. The right one is also our self-developed radio frequency chip. It's also very advanced IF chipset. We, we are proud to say, this year we own the top one in Chinese national IF contest through this chip. So later, we, we focus on the Quantum 3 chip. We designed it with strong baseband processing ability, with the full constellations and the full frequencies. It's a 40 nanometer process, so well, when it becomes smaller, but it's still very stable in the industrial applications. Secondly, we support SAA fast capture. It will efficiently improve the GNS tracking initialized time and the recapture time. Thirdly, we develop the robust art interference technology through software and hardware two sides. It means even you put your receiver in some strong electric magnetic environment, or even you put your module very nearby to the antenna. I mean, like one centimeter without extra shaded case. It can still maintain a good signal quality. At last, we put our advanced quantum algorithm inside. 
to support the GNS navigation and uh, GNS plus INS navigation. Uh, later, we can see the performance in the following testing analysis. Above is for the core chips. Uh, the one of the most important advantages is its smaller size, the lightweight, and the low power consumption. We can see it O3 is uh, 30 plus a uh, 30 times 30 times 3.2 millimeter, and uh, eight gram, and the typically one watt power consumption, while K823 is uh, 40 times 30 times 3.2 uh, 3 millimeter, 10 gram, and uh, typically 1.6 watt power consumption. Now, please notice that K803 is just a single antenna for the position, and K823 is a dual antenna or modules for the positioning and heading. It means, it means what? It means you can integrate the modules in a smaller container. It means after your integration, the receiver can work for a longer time before the battery runs out. It means, it means the lower calorific value, so you can design your receiver's layout better, and uh, you will maintain all the chip's stability on your PCB. But it not means we compromise to the position and the heading performance. Uh, whatever K7, uh, whatever K803 or K823, whatever the position and heading, they will both support GPS, GLONASS, Beidou, Galileo, and uh, currently we see the Beidou Global Signal. So the integrated navigation, uh, even though it becomes smaller, but we still but we still put the IMU inside. The onboard IMU can give you centimeter accuracy in three seconds and the meters accuracy in 30 seconds. It means in some special science, especially in the navigation system, when you drive under the overpass or drive across the tunnel, only GNS system cannot give you a solution. But K8 still maintains accuracy in a short time. Uh, so later, K8 series is also very easy to integrate. It's surface-mounted device, just like other onboard chipset. You needn't sort it manually. As well, we designed for flexible communications for different applications. Uh, attach the pinout of K803 and K823. We can see. They, they have at least three UART and two events, one PPS. And in addition, K803 also have autumn and VR port for some uh, professional things, I think. Meanwhile, you also, we also give a free SPI to do the customize, uh, whatever you want to use it for the USB or for the CAN or for the internet, you can just contact us to do the customize. Uh, and also aims to be convenient to some customers. Uh, maybe you use other brand before. We designed the same pinout with the K823 can be pin to pin to directly replace without any matters. Uh, actually, surface-mounted device is not easy for the research or for some quick integration. So currently, we have two solutions. If you have, if you had used our OEM board before, we prepared three types of uh, color version for you. One is for K708, K706, and the last is K726. Also, if you are the new users, or just to get, uh, or just you want to get several for the research, I will suggest you to use the new evaluation kit. Uh, I believe the K8 evaluation kit is totally before, totally different than what you saw before. Even though we speak it as a 
evaluation kit, but actually you can regard it as a sim simple receiver. The first day we designed with a transparent cover, and you can easily see the module working status via the different indicator light. Uh, secondly, we designed with one Type C port. This port uh, had combined the power supply and the data communication functions. It means you can just use one cable to connect to your computer. Then you can directly do the debug or do the data transmission. Or even you can connect to your smartphone to do the same things. Uh, secondly, we still open all the necessary ports, including three UART, two events, and one PPS. Just like I said, it's not only an evaluation kit. You can use it in your real project. Uh, later, we also design a Bluetooth for you. If you, have, if you had put the kit in one place, maybe in your project already, you needn't take another cable. You can just use our Sway Master software to connect the board and uh, check and uh, config or do what you want. It will be very convenient. Sway Master software can be downloaded from the Google Play as free. Hmm. I think K8 series, these two types can be used on almost all the areas where the accuracy is necessary. For example, you can use it in professional fields like such as the GIS, such as GBUS, such as survey and mapping, such as deformation monitoring. And you can also use it in the different industries like a robotic, like a UAV, or the online driving, or the precision agriculture, or the machine control, and so on. And the K8 series is also very suitable to consuming market like the Internet of Things, or to the personal position. In the past, maybe you know, in the past, maybe the reason of the power consumption, the size or the price, high accuracy GNS products are really difficult to be used in, in this consuming market. But now I can see K8 series will be really suitable. Okay, so the first part is uh, near finished. At last, I, I want to share another thing for you. Kamnav technology is not a single GNSS or regional manufacturer. We also provide the professional solutions. We can help to put the Bluetooth, put the Wi-Fi, put the 5G or 4G, put the LoRa radio, all things in one container, just according to your requirement. We also have a very professional software R&T team. They they do different softwares for the different solutions. And they also develop Kamnav Cloud Platform. We can see the Navy Cloud Platform. In the future, we are trying to put all, allow all the Kamnav products to log in the cloud. You can easily to do the configuration to do the debug, do the data log, or analyze something, everything just remotely. Okay, the first part is finished. So, Chloe? Okay. So, hello everyone, it's me again. And let's take a break from the in product introduction and also let Arthur to rest for a moment. In this part, I want to introduce you our promotion activities of K8. Again, in case some of you came in late and uh, didn't uh, heard that. So the K8 pre-sale will begin today and we will have a trimming price for the top 100 customers. Like Arthur just said, our K8 modules has smaller size, the lower power consumption, 
and uh, the surface mounted design it's easy to integrate but it has still great performance so it can be used in more high accuracy areas and have more applications like internet of things the smart city so if you are interested in our k8 gnss oem modules please don't miss the chance and what's more we will have a educational pro education program after the live show so no matter you are individuals or companies or institutions as long as you have done any GNSS researches with our K8 modules, you can apply for our education program bonus because our bonus is not only for the K8 promotion, we also want to let more people know our GNSS industry and the Beidou Global Navigation System. So if you are interested in our education program, please follow our Facebook and we will announce the more details on our Facebook. So, oh, by the way, please don't forget to leave your comments if you have any questions. We will have a Q&A part at the end of a live show and Arthur will give you the answer. So let's continue to the product introduction. Welcome Arthur back okay. to show you the test data of our K8 modules okay. okay okay so i'm back again so firstly let's see the second video
Okay, finish. Okay, we continue to the second part to see the K8 testing performance in different conditions. So to be better to see the performance, we choose other three manufacturers to, to compare together. Now we call them M1, M2, and M3. M1 is the same as K, K8, have the onboard MU chip, <coughs> and M2, M3 uh, that don't have a MU chipset. So just, just the support GNS calculating. Uh, aims to verify the navigation performance and uh, the geodetic performance. We did the testing with both dynamic science and static science. Uh, in the vehicle dynamic testing, we almost drive across the whole Shanghai. You can see it uh, from the suburb to the city center, then back to the suburb again. We check five different signs, including <coughs> and have a canopy in the underground garage and the overpass in the tunnel and in the urban, uh, urban canyon. So it almost includes all the classic environments in the navigation systems. The first is about the urban canyon. It's the city center in Shanghai. The building you can see here almost at least 30 floors. Here we can see the left two pictures. When the vehicle go across the sparse buildings, the four manufacturers, including ours, uh, both have the similar performance. But when we put the eyes to the clustered building, uh, the right two images, K8 is still okay. At least we can see it's still smooth and uh, without uh, ob obvious offset. But the red one, the red one is M1. M1 has a little offset you can see here, but it's still smooth. Uh, when we say M2 and M3, maybe because there are no MU chipset, the, the path is not smooth, or even we cannot say it's offset. Uh, we can see the here some point offset too much. We, 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 we can call it flying points. Then we try to go across the tunnel and the Hump River to see the IMU performance when the satellites lock, uh, lock loss. Still, we just compare K8 and M1 because the M2 and M3 doesn't have an IMU chip. We, we blow up the key part to the right images. Uh, actually, we drive across the tunnel when, and then we turn back to the upside tunnel and uh, across again. So we can regard that two paths should be almost parallel. We, we based on this consumption, we check K, K8 MU is almost uh, parallel but actually M1 doesn't. Uh, it, you can see it had moved somewhere. And uh, later the, the overpass environment is also a very important factor in navigation system because you usually can just check the half number satellites than numbers. And usually this sign will continue long time. Here we can see the four boards have similar and uh, acceptable performance, but just the yellow one, the yellow one is, M, uh, the yellow one is uh, M2. They have a little offset sometimes, and the red one, you can see, it breaks the smooth path in a very short time when it turns the left. Then we also do the testing in the underground garage to test the long time but low but low speed IMU performance. The whole driving time in the garage around uh, 3.5 minutes. Uh, but firstly, I want to say, in some ways, the onboard IMU continues more than a minute without GNS corrections. The final result should be regarded as uh, unbelievable. Uh, but here, 
uh, at least we can say the green pass has still maintained a smooth performance. But the red one, uh, finally, we don't know where it had gone. Then the final sign is uh, under all the nearby the trees. Uh, it's a really common condition, uh, just like urban canyon. We can see we all do a good job in this sign. So above is the best on the vehicle mounted. Uh, but actually, we also have a very professional test equipment and conditions at the office. You should see you, you should you should say you should see it before in the video. We design a elliptic orbit while the half orbit is nearby the tree, but it's still open. And another orbit and another half orbit is totally under the tree and near the building. Then we put a electric toilet on site. The storage battery power seat. The toilet can run with the stumble speed and the same head, same pass before the battery run out. We can see the right four chat. In the each figure here, the top chat is the height analysis and the bottom chat is the horizontal posi positioning analysis. The points are all based on the fixed or the IS result. We can see all of them, the fixed position or the IS position and the height are all acceptable. But just the blue one, the M2, you can see it lost some point on the top of the orbit. And M3 also lost a little. It should be because of the tree covered. But I think K8 and M1 is uh, benefited from the onboard IMU chip. Uh, and because of the K8, 2, 3, and M1 both support the heading. So we mainly see the, another result about this. From the result, we can see the velocity accuracy and heading accuracy. K8 should be a little better in the IMS. And the result, actually the results are both stable. Of course, the accuracy from two manufacturers can both stand, uh, satisfy the I think can both satisfy the requirements about the most of the project. Uh, I'm to verify the geodetic performance, especially for the land survey. We also do some normal testings with the different baselines and the different signs. Uh, here because M3 is uh, is not really suitable to, in this area. So we just uh, compare K8, M1, and M2. Uh, firstly, we can see in the heavy canopy environment, K8 and M1 have similar result. Uh, whatever in eight kilometers or the seven or the uh, thirty kil uh, kilometers baseline. But obviously, M2 doesn't. The whatever the fixed rate or the initialized time is not really it's not really good. And when we put the scenes between the buildings to simulate the urban KU environment and do the same testing, this time M2 shows better. These three brands have similar performance. Uh, of course, because of the environment in Redden, we are hard to see which one is really better. Finally, at last, we do a special testing for 16 baseline RTK. To be, honest, to, to be honest, it's almost impossible in a real project, and uh, we also we, we would also not suggest it. But we can see these three brands have are able to process it and do it very well. So, comes so all the testing is uh, is finished. Finally, I still want to go back here and uh, talk about K8 and our evaluation kit. Uh, if you want to quickly do the research, test, or even apply it in your project, it will be really efficient. And currently, it's in the precise time. You can enjoy the Trami price 
we just offer the first 100, 100 sets with a low price during this time. Mm. Please do not miss it. Okay, that's all. Thanks. Well, thanks Arthur so much for his for his introduction, and I believe many of your doubts has been solved in the introduction. So next, uh, let's move to the Q and A part. Huh, come yeah. Here. So and we for our with Jason to print the questions for us. Yeah, we just wait a minute. Yeah. So let's show the modules to the. You take one. I take one. Okay. This is the K803. It's a 30, 30 times 30. Yeah. yeah. This one is uh, inside. Okay, the questions coming. Okay. 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 Um, so this is the question. <laughs> you have just okay, wait, wait, wait. okay. Talk about it. The first question is uh, interference means the jamming and the swerving as well. Uh, actually, it means jamming. Yeah. Jamming. Um, next. The same pin, the same pin out of your blocks. blocks. Uh, yeah. we cannot see it. Yeah, you you just uh, you can check it later. <laughs> you can check yeah. on our official website. We will uh have the more details yeah, can, about our yeah. product on it. Yes. So next question. Bluetooth integrated OS port. Yes, it will it will be in, uh include in the evaluation kit. Yes. So it supports Bluetooth. So next, does K8 support all frequency of Babel? Yes, it will support. It will oh. support, yes. Oh. Uh, but K803 will support all. Uh, K823 uh, K823 just the uh, dual frequencies. Dual frequency. Okay. Yes. So is N5 use K8 module? Ah, yes, you are professional. So you're so smart. <laughs> Next. Interference means yeah. Yeah. Then the next question. So does K823 support full constellation both positioning and heading? Oh it's actually it's the same same questions than than before one. Then yes. K823 will support the position and heading together. Uh with the four constellations. So I remember we have the K726 is also a heading. K726, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it will support yeah. full constellation. It will not support a Galilee and a bit of global signal, but so. K823 will support all. Yeah. Yes. So that's a big improvement. Yes. And I wish all of your questions have been solved here. And our Q&A part is end now. And our live show will end soon. So thank you so much for your watching. And if you are interested in our products or our educational program, please follow our Facebook and you can get further information. So hope to see you next time. Yeah, bye. see you next time. Bye bye. Bye.